Thank you for listening to the Gift Beats Vegas podcast. We're ready for another week of Thursday night football. On the season, I'm 4-2 and two against the spread picking Thursday night games. But I'll be honest, week six, this past week, was my worst week of the season. I only hit five games against the spread, right? That's not up to my standards. 50% or higher is the standard that I want to live by for the entire season. If at the end of 17 weeks, if my spread record is not above 50%, that to me is considered a failure. I don't care about the people that say I'm entertaining, this, say I still help them, whatever. For me, this is a business. If I can't go above 50%, then I'm not offering anything else that any other YouTuber isn't offering. And then, then I'm done. If I can't be different than the average Joe's, if I can't be different than the guy with chicken wing sauce on his t-shirt, that's the difference. So... With that, guys, let's get into it. Thursday night football. We got Jaguars plus one and a half versus the Saints over under set at 39 and a half. I'm going to go over. That does seem a little bit low to me. And I'm going to go Jacksonville to win and cover. Now, let's get the elephant out of the room right away because I know what a lot of you guys are saying. Trevor Lawrence isn't going to be 100%. Hell, he might not even play. Well, I'll tell you what. If he doesn't play, then don't bet the game. But I'm telling you what, and this is not an over-exaggeration, I think C.J. Bethard, if he were to take the place of Trevor Lawrence, I think he could even get this victory done if they don't turn the football over offensively. And the reason why I say that is because, and the main reason I'm taking Jacksonville to win and cover is because of how bad the Saints offense has been. So first and foremost, that Houston Texans defense is terrible. That front seven, talent-wise, is one of the weakest units in the NFL. On top of the fact that you got Stingley out, you got other injuries in the secondary this whole season, and yet the Saints couldn't even muster 20 points in that game. So I'm supposed to believe all of a sudden the Saints, they're going to put up 20, 30 points against the Jags defense that hasn't been that bad this year. Now, I'll admit, with the Jags, there's things about that defense that I don't like. Not a huge fan of the secondary. I'm not a huge fan of the physicality in the interior linebacker spot. But I'll tell you one thing that they do well, and that's get after the quarterback. They got a good edge rush led by Josh Allen. They can get to the quarterback quick. They're fast, physical on the interior of the defensive line, and I think that's going to be the difference in this game. I think they're going to get after Derek Carr, who really can't move at all, and I think you guys have seen that. Everybody's getting so caught up in the story about Trevor Lawrence being hurt that we're forgetting how bad Derek Carr has been so far this year. We can't just forget that and say, well, Vegas has this as a trap game, so the Saints are going to win just because of that. Everyone's going to think the Jags are going to pull this off. No. That's not going to be the case. The only reason why the Saints were even able to beat the Patriots was because the offense for the Patriots gave them the game. It was just embarrassing. I don't think Jacksonville's going to do that. I think they're well coached. I think they know that they don't have to force the ball down the field to win this game. The defense for Jacksonville doesn't have to do anything crazy. It just has to rush four or five, and I think they're going to get after Derek Carr for a couple of reasons again because he's stationary also because this receiving core still hasn't gotten to where it needs to get to yet I mean Chris Olav I haven't seen much chemistry there and Michael Thomas we really still don't know if he can get back to his former self but the big injury that I'm looking at is Ryan Ramchick for the Saints offensive line if he's not playing and Hurst is banged up at left tackle, and they really don't have, like, Penning really hasn't been that good either. So regardless of what they do at the tackle position, they're in a pretty bad spot. I think that opens up the door for Josh Allen to get to Derek Carr. He could have a two, three sack game. And when I'm looking at this Jags defense, not only that, but I like Trevon Walker on the other side. So that, to me, is going to be a big part of this game, probably the biggest matchup to me that no one's looking at is that Jags pass rush. Give it credit. And then I got to give credit where it's due uh, to the Saints, though, to some degree, because I'll, I got to tell you guys the truth about everything. 
the one matchup that I'm worried about the most when picking the Jags in this game is Alvin Kamara. That this is going to be one of those games where he just balls out. Doesn't matter that the offensive line is not going to be great in this game, opening up run lanes left and right. He's just going to have one of those games where he's above the rest. And he has that. He has that ability in him. And if anything, if there is one weakness against the Jags, I mentioned the speed, I mentioned getting to the quarterback, but the size and physicality of the Jags front seven is a little bit of an issue. But again, if Ryan the truck ram chick and this offensive line's banged up, Saints might not be able to take full advantage of that. But Elvin Kamara is such a great athlete that it's possible that he could. The other factors why I'm taking Jacksonville in this game is some of the weaknesses that I see on the Saints defense. So for one, Demario Davis might not even play. He's a game time decision. So even if he plays not 100% and this linebacking court really isn't that great, there's no one else that can really step up here and command that interior linebacker spot. And then I'm also looking at that defensive line. There's no size up there. You can run on this Saints defensive line, and we've seen how good ETN's been so far. You guys have seen it. He's had some big games the last couple of weeks. I have seen no reason why that can't continue. Brandon Scherf is a little bit banged up, but he's trending towards playing. From all reports that I've seen, Trevor Lawrence even coming out of his mouth, he's playing in this game, even if he's going to be a little bit hobbled. But his mobility, to me, is irrelevant in this game because the Saints don't have a good pass rush. Lawrence isn't going to have to be mobile in this game to get it done. They're going to have – they should have the run game going, play action. And I don't think – like, again, even if they play conservative to a degree – I think they can slowly pull ahead in this game if they just let this game go by default. They make the right decisions. They attack the right weaknesses, like I mentioned. Don't force the football down the field because that would be the only other way that they could blow this game because there are some good players. Um, Honey Badger's a little bit banged up, but he'll be playing. Marcus May's very good. Lattimore, very good. Uh, That, to me, could be the only other way that this happens. If Lawrence just has one of those games where you know, he pushes the ball down the field, throws it into tight windows, or just throws some bad passes, maybe because of his injury. But I think the Jags are going to be smarter than that. I think one thing for sure is that Doug Patterson, he has so far been, in my opinion, underrated. When people talk about coach of the year so far, I think you have to include him in the discussion because, guys, like when I look at this Jags team, it's not overly talent stock. But this, he, they've gotten it done, and they've competed against some of the better teams in this league, like including when they beat Buffalo. That's a big deal, albeit in London, whatever. We can make excuses till the, the cows come home. But at the end of the day, they pressured Josh Allen, and they ran the football, and Trevor Lawrence didn't have to put the whole game on his shoulders. So anytime that I think that can happen with the Jags, that's a different story too. Because I'll admit, Trevor Lawrence to me in a – in a crunch game moment when he's getting pressure left and right, hit left and right. I'm not making that bet. I'm not going with him. But in situations where I know that he's not going to be under pressure 24 seven, which in this game, unless something crazy happens where it's, you know, the unrealism sets in and it happens, he shouldn't be under pressure. Like Cam Jordan, like that don't scare me anymore. Uh, th- there should be no issue here. Cam Robinson should be able to handle that. So with that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. Looks like Friday afternoon I will be back for the picks. I would love to wait until Saturday, but I have to work this weekend. I actually get out of work at 3 o'clock on Sunday, so I'll be chilling watching the games. I cannot wait for that Miami-Philly game. That is an awesome night game. We finally get something to look forward to because even if that game is boring, like even if it's low scoring and close, that's still going to be entertaining because one of those teams got to lose. One of those teams are going to have the bragging rights. So this is one of the the first few games that I've actually looked forward to on like in a on a night game, like a matchup that's actually worthy of getting the popcorn out, getting some drinks going, and watching it. 
So again, guys, thank you for listening. I'll see you soon. See you Friday.